Hello and welcome uh, to our Gospel uh, video address here um, at Bridgend uh, Gospel Hall. It's great uh, to have you on uh, line watching with us and we do pray uh, that you really will be blessed as a result of hearing uh, the Word of God um, this afternoon. These are strange times, difficult times, times where things are changing, but the good news is that the Bible never changes. The good thing is that the good news of the glorious gospel is the same uh, as it ever was. Uh, and that's why an unshakable and unmovable um, foundation on which we can base our lives. And I hope that as we just spend the next several minutes together that you will learn something that I know has the capacity, uh, the possibility to change your life. And most importantly, has the capacity to change your eternal destiny. Uh, I want to uh, begin by reading from the Bible. Often people think about the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We often think of the Lord Jesus as being meek and being mild and being gentle. Uh, and those were very often true. Uh, he says he's meek uh, and lowly in heart. And yet when, we, when he reserves his most strict um, criticism, his strongest words, for those religious hypocrites of the day who um, put uh, put limitations on others and add to the weight and the burden uh, of life for for the people around about them, he speaks to them in the book of Matthew and chapter number twenty. Sorry, chapter number twenty three and verse number twenty five, and he says this: "Woe, woe to you!" scribes and Pharisees, those would be the religious leaders of the day. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but within are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, and then the outside will be clean also. Woe, he says, to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwards, but within, full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous to men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. These are strong words. These are words that I'm sure would have cut to the quick and to the core of those who heard them. People who had spent their lives trying to keep the law, and it was the law of God. People who had spent their life trying to, the majority of the time, trying to do good. Reading their scriptures, the Torah, memorising it, following the law, attending the, attending the synagogue. And yet here comes this radical new preacher, on rolls onto the scene and starts calling them out as Hypocrites, harsh words, hard words. And yet all of the words that the Lord Jesus ever spoke were words which were intended to bring people to God. The Lord Jesus, he is the means of communication between God the Father and a sinful and broken world. And the words that he speaks are words which are intended, yes, to convict of sin. Yes, to point out the failure, but ultimately to bring them to realise that their hypocrisy, that they are whited grave lives were insufficient and yet there was he was going to point out to them another way just a couple of hours ago i was out in the garden uh, and we now like many people have been spending the last couple of months trying to tidy up the garden and trying to make things look better just to help pass the time uh, my wife would not be surprised to find out that as i went out there to paint the white the, the stones that line uh, our driveway that when i went out i took with me my paintbrush and my paint uh, and when I went out and discovered the paints uh, the stones were covered in flaking paint that was loose there was loose grass that were strewn on it uh, there was chips and cracks in the stones and there was moss growing out uh, and all over it what I find myself what I found myself doing out of sheer laziness was painting over the top of the cracks painting over the top of the moss, even painting over the top of the painting over the top of the dry stalks of grass that clung uh, to the stones. Uh, when I stand in my living room and 
look out of the window. I see this array of beautifully arranged, glistening white stones. Uh, if, if you come into our driveway, if you come down to Windy Edge, you'll drive in uh, and you'll see there the glistening white stones. Uh, the reality is that there's still the dirty old black stone underneath with the fungating moss and with the shards, shards of grass, blades of grass and the cracks and below. What I've done there effectively is I've whitewashed them so that from a distance, if you drive up, you'll think that I've got a well-maintained driveway, a well-maintained house and all will appear to be respectable and ornate. The truth of the matter is that on closer inspection and after maybe a couple of months of rain and wind and and, uh, and storms, the peeling paint will, rec will recover, the uh, moss will peel off and regrow and the cracks might cause the stones to fall apart, revealing that those stones that have been whitewashed, in fact, inside, they're still broken, they are still diseased, they're still infected with the fungating moss uh, and they've still got a black heart of stone underneath the whitewash that's been put over them. Well, that's the parable that the Lord Jesus speaks to these religious leaders. He says to them, you've wiped the outside of the cup, but you've not cleaned out what's inside. You've taken your plate and you've wiped the outside of the plate, but you haven't dealt with what's on top. Outside you look like a beautiful sepulchre, a grave painted on the outside. From a distance it all looks good, but we all know what's inside a grave. Dead men's bones and those dead men's bones stink with the rot of corruption. The reality is that just like the stones in my driveway, just like the sepulchres that the Lord Jesus points out uh, about these Pharisees, uh, each of us has the, the, are at risk of titivating up our lives in order to make them appear good on the outside. A whitewashed veneer over the black heart of sin and of failure. The black heart that causes us to look where second time where we shouldn't have looked first. To uh, let go with uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. To uh, be angry without a cause. To have a lustful look or to have a jealous or envious attitude towards others. The Bible tells us that that sin, we've fallen far short of God's standard. And we have a choice. We try to make ourselves better. We try to behave better. We try to whitewash over the sins of our heart, but the reality is that we have a heart of sin. The Bible says the heart of man is actually deceitful above all things, and it's desperately wicked. But there is a solution. The solution is not to paint over the paper over the cracks or to paint over the black stones of the driveway or, or to paint a, a veneer outside uh, of the sepulchre, the grave, but rather to change what's inside. To change us from the inside out, the gospel, the good news that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to deliver us from the consequences of our sin, to deliver us from the judgment that's to come. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary as a substitute for your sin and for my sin, so that if I confess my sin, then he is just, he's faithful, he's just, he forgives us for my sin and cleanses us, washes us clean from all unrighteousness. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, everything becomes new. I think we need to give up on whitewashing and putting veneers on the outside. We need a heart transplant. We need the new birth. If any man wants to be part of the kingdom, he must be born again. How do we receive this new birth? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Uh, let's make sure we are not papering over the cracks of the sin of our heart, but rather receive a new nature through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the basis of what he has done on the cross of Calvary on our behalf. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All the old things have passed away and all things are become new. Believe in him and you will receive abundant and eternal life. Thanks very much for listening. That's just been a very short excerpt uh, to try to encapsulate the greatest story ever told. Please visit the website. Please get in touch with the Christians at Bridge End Gospel Hall. They'll be able to explain things more fully to you if you need to.
to find out more. But thanks for being with us and may God bless you. Thank you.